So moving on, I want to teach you a few things about Pocket Pages while I talk about the updates. If you haven't heard of Pocket Pages yet, it is a server side pages framework for Pocket Base. That's different from server side rendering. We're talking about old school PHP style server side pages. If you haven't given Pocket Pages a star on GitHub yet, you can do that and help us out. But for now, let's jump into the documentation. So we've been using Pocket Pages to build the Kingdom app. There are a few new documentation feature updates to Pocket Pages that I wanted to review today. The first thing I want to talk about is that loading data has been vastly improved. We've always been able to do inline data loading right in an EJS page, but I've never been super happy about that because the code formatting doesn't work well with VS Code. So today I came up with this new idea called server script blocks and it's equivalent syntax in the end, but this markup style works a lot better with VS Code and Prettier's formatting tools. So check it out. The old way of building the API was to create a folder and then inside it you'd have index EGS and all that would do is stringify the data. And then you'd have a get.js, for example. And here you'd need to export a function that ultimately returned a grid object. And then that was stringified in the template because what comes out of the loader function is named data in the template. You can see in this loader function, it's passed the API object, so you can destructure everything from the API that you need. That is automatically happening in the template files already. So it would be possible if we wanted to, we could just grab all of this code right here, paste it into the EJS and not have this get.js at all. But the issue with that is the tooling isn't very good. So I split them apart, but I ended up not liking that and I really wanted to fix it. So I created a way to do server-side scripting syntax. Here's the same join code again. Look, it has script server right up here at the top. Pocket pages will see this and it will automatically run this server side. This will not get served to the client. And then you can simply echo out the grid at the bottom. So to me, this is much cleaner code. It's more compact and isolated. And it also eliminates a folder and two files in favor of just one file. I did the same thing for the login EJS and I repeated it again for a version EJS. So this format feels much, much better. I also improved the echo command down here in the API. You'll see the echo command. Notice what this note says. Echo writes immediately to the response output stream when called, whether in a loader or template. Objects are automatically stringified, so there's no need to call JSON stringify unless you need special formatting. That means in templates, you can do something like this, where you just echo out an object and it will stringify it, render it. Pocket pages will recognize that you echoed JSON and it will serve it as a JSON response. You can see that happening right here. If I go to API version, there's the JSON response. Watch in the network tab. If you look closely in the response headers, you'll see that it says application JSON. Now, the one exception to this is if you do in fact just render a string. It will not automatically render the string as JSON. It will assume that you're trying to return some HTML content. To talk about, I renamed the require function to resolve. Resolve will traverse up the directory tree looking for a file named whatever you give it, but only in the private directories. So if you resolve config, it's going to jump all the way up to the top and find it here. That's different from how require works, and I've found this to be quite handy. Look at the difference here. Here is a require statement where I'm providing a path to the hooks root and searching for package JSON to get the version number. That's going to come from here. But now look at join. Join has a resolve directive, and it resolves grid. So that traverses up. At first, it looks in API to see if there's a private grid.js there. No, there's not. So then it goes up to the pages directory, finds a private folder and grid.js is here. So it will find the nearest ancestor in the private folders with that name. This is a really nice way to organize modules. And we haven't really gotten to it yet in Kingdom, but includes would work the same way. So here, if you wanted to include a partial, it would use the same traversal strategy, the same resolution strategy.